a heavy layout, but it's slightly different. Okay, so what I'm doing at the moment is looking after my stamps, which up until now I really haven't been doing very well. These are Stampin' Up! Border Borderettes, they're called. I believe you can still get them. Um, I'm not a Stampin' Up! De demonstrator. I bought these from a lady that I know. Um, now, these Borderettes, okay, they're a little bit finicky. So here I'm showing you those two stamping blocks, they're the only ones I have. However, I did splurge and buy myself a zero centering ruler from Creative Memories the other day. And I've been tossing up whether to buy one for a while and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so what I realized was I don't necessarily need to buy a bigger stamping block because I do have a... It's like a Misty, but it's a We Are Memory Keepers one. Um, and so if I want to get anything accurate like that, I can use that with my biggest stamps. However, these stamps, these little suckers, let me tell you. I have to tell you, the thing that annoys me about these stamps is it's difficult to get them straight because they sort of, yeah, well, they're long, they're thin, they're the photopolymer stuff it's it's difficult to get them dead straight okay so what I figured is I and the reason I bought them was not for any reason other than look at me lining up all these greys and blues okay so the idea I had in my head when I started versus what it looks like when I'm finished I had this idea I woke yeah I did it again I woke up at 1 30 this morning and I had an idea for my first page and what I wanted to do was pull out a heap of Distress Oxides because they stamp nice and clear for me. And I wanted to use these Borderette stamps, but I wanted to use all of them and just create a background with them. And I wanted to use a range of different colours. So I didn't just, all in the blue-green, blue-green, blue-grey sort of zone, but... I just wanted to create a background. Now, originally in my head, I thought I wanted to sort of focus more in an oval shape right in the center of the page. As you can see, <clears throat> that's not an oval and I'm not staying in the center of the page. I'll be honest with you. I had a video playing, <laughs> I had a video playing and because this was so simple, I had, um, at the beginning of this, I was watching an Adventures with Purpose video, and towards the end, I I foolishly put on, and I don't know if anyone else watches this, but it's called um, House of, the House of Dragon, House of Dragon or the House of Dragons. Um, sorry, I'm just having a look. It's called the House of Dragon, and it's on Foxtel or Binge, I believe you can watch it. And, oh my goodness, it is so good. It is so juicy and it's just, I love it. So, let me know if you're watching that too. It's pretty good. I just watched the fourth episode, which is pretty cool. I wish I could just binge the whole thing. That's how good it is. And I don't do that with a lot of stuff. But, yeah, I really, I love period pieces. My little bit of insight to me, um, one of my all-time favourite movies... Actually, I'll go back a little bit further. When I was 19, I got a job at Blockbuster Video. Yes, everyone can have a laugh. Blockbuster Video. Wow, what a difference. Um, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed the job, actually. And I got into management, and it was all fantastic. I, I have no complaints. However, it did open my mind to so many different categories of movies and genres and all that sort of bizzo and it led me to the my all-time favorite movie and a lot of people who know me know that I love Son-in-Law with Paulie Shaw and that is that is one of my favorite movies but my all-time go-to favorite movie is the Franco Zeffirelli version of Romeo and Juliet that is the one movie that I absolutely 
fell in love with and anything in that period genre sort of looking um, Shakespeare anything sort of like that I absolutely love so I never got into Lord of the Rings to be completely honest with you I've never I've never even given it a chance it's pretty sad isn't it but as I'm waffling on all I'm doing is stamping guys I'm just putting different stamps different shades different colors I'm making sure that I'm cleaning off my stamp in between each color so I don't cross contaminate and I'm lining up what I am doing is I'm lining up with the ruler and this is something that if you struggle with lining your stamps up this is actually fantastic because one my fingers are nowhere near the ink so I'm not getting inky fingers which is great two I can line the stamp up although that didn't look very lined up that was my fault when I push on these these particular stamps they're quite how would you describe them they're like jelly so they're they're really because they're quite deep but they're very very narrow so if you push on them too hard you sort of skew them by this point I had let go of my expectations of having nice straight lines so but I do find what I did find is on this ruler if you line you can lay your border it down and line it up perfectly with the lines on the ruler where it's yeah it, it it was a happy accident that I discovered and I have to say I will not be buying any bigger stamping blocks because that there that's a winner that is a winner and if you're interested in purchasing one of these I will shoot you over to Jill Jill watches my videos and I'm sure she can put a um, a link in the comments below if anyone's interested in purchasing one of these rulers they're really I gotta be honest it's really really good and I'm glad I bought it um, I do I do have a CM account um, but I'm not really going into the sale of it or anything like that so but Jill is more than happy to help you out so now we have Okay, I'm getting closer. Now, this is where I decided to get the brighter blues out. So, I sort of went with the greys and the faded jeans, the weathered wood. I went down that path. I will put a list of all the colours I used below. But I swear, you it will be like pulling teeth if I sit here and list them all off. Because I quite literally used two, four, six... 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I think it's about 16 or 17 colours. So, look, at this point, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm regrouping and I'm like, okay, now, at this point, it sort of made me feel a little bit like, um, I don't know how old you, you all are, but do you remember the dot matrix printers? this is again going back to my blockbuster video days we used to print things off on a dot matrix printer which you know it, it was one of those things but this is what it's reminding me of at the moment and I'm I was kind of a little bamboozled going what am I doing what am I doing is this going to work is this going in the direction I want it to go I've just used all this ink like what's what am I doing here I've spent quite literally at this point I had spent about 45 minutes stamping my adventures with purpose video had had finished by this point and of which I was very saddened to learn that due to the expense of retrieving vehicles out of lakes and ponds and rivers they they opt to leave them there that that really saddens me like that's really that's not great I mean it's obviously someone's someone's car there's obviously an insurance situation or something I don't know how it works in America but yeah it's kind of really yeah bothers me just a little bit but that's all right it's okay so at this point I'm like oh hang on turn it that way I don't mind it hang on what am I doing here tap 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 what am I going to do? 
Okay, I know what I'm going to do. Bring in some peacock feathers. More peacock feathers. So I think the biggest problem that I had was see those three really dark blue and I think they were um I think they were prize ribbon or maybe they were chipped sapphire can you see how they're standing out they're little hexagons and they're standing out like yeah that piece of paper there that was my inspiration color that's where I was going in my mind I was going the blue grays that's what that's what I was doing okay never fear when I've put this much time into something I'm going to make it work somehow not sure how still not sure if more is going to make it better or more is going to make it worse what I'm using now is actually my black archival um, waterproof jet black ink and yes my giant ink pad and I'm actually loving it now now I've got used to it I'm really enjoying it okay so um, at this point adding a little bit of the black actually helped me sort of refocus because I was losing all the blues it was just yeah it wasn't working so this is where I'm learning as well when you use a permanent ink clean it clean it Karen this is I, I do it all the time I'm terrible with my supplies some things I look after big time and look what I'm doing I just spent all that time stamping and look what I did and you know what I actually liked it so I thought okay I'm going to use a scrap of black and I'm going to trim it down and I only I didn't want it to be too black in your face so I literally it's like one sixteenth border it is the tiniest border now here is the problem that is actually perfectly straight I actually had a look at this to see <laughs> yep I checked it and the black border is right the problem I had with it was the lines because they're all over the place it made them look really crooked so then I figured you know what I'm all in let's see what happens let's come down the rabbit hole with me let's see what I can do with this I didn't want to throw it out I didn't want to start again I didn't want to waste it at this point I figured to see what happens so I pulled out my peacock feathers again I love that color oh how nice is that color and I wanted to just add a little bit of mixed media top and bottom and when you see me wiping that piece of plastic like that it's because I'm going to add an additional color and I don't want to cross contaminate them uncharted marin oh my god I love that color seriously adore that color always have I used to always call that color modern blue modern modern blue green that's what I used to call it whenever I talked about it on a wall or anything that's what a friend of mine had it painted in her house with white architraves and it looked stunning it looked so good and um, okay so now I'm drying it off and I'm thinking to myself this is not going at all how I thought of it at 1 30 this morning however I'm still still tapping my fingers still what do I do here maybe a little bit less okay I'm starting to like this I'm very very slowly I'm starting to figure out and I figured you know what I need a bit of metallic that's what I need you want to see someone do something stupid <laughs> look how I'm doing this I'm using art glitter glue for crying out loud it does work but could have made it so much easier on myself if I had have reached just to my left and grabbed my gold leafing liquid that would have made it so much easier it's a really that glue that I'm talking about it's a it's quite runny and it leaves it it just leaves the area tacky so why I didn't do that I don't know I'm just having some sort of meltdown I think at this point I think I was I think I was 
saying to myself, well, you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. Let's see what happens. So this brush I use every time. This is the one brush that I use every time. It's just a, I think it's a Montmartre brush actually. Uh, yep, it's a Montmartre. It's one of their cheap water brushes. And it's all chunked up with glue. And that's what I use whenever I do any sort of leafing, gold leaf, metallic leaf, anything like that. And it just brush it off. So this is what I was doing. And you know, you want to know something really, really stupid? I created that background and then realized I've got a water watercolor background pad in there that probably looks almost the same. Anyway. So this is one of my homemade mica sprays. Now, I didn't even need to dry that. It was dry in five seconds flat. That I just made. There is a video if you want to have a look at it and you want to see how to make that homemade mica spray. It costs you pennies. Pennies. I'm Australian and I'm telling you, it costs next to nothing. Um, and I just make up very tiny amounts in my spray bottles so if I decide that I need to use one of those bottles for a different color it's not the end of the world if I tip it out so I just use isocol and a little bit of Mod Podge like the tiniest 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 bit and add my mica swirl it around and spray to your heart's content all right now I've worked out what I'm doing and what I didn't like about it. I had too much of a raw, rough edge on it. Now, I'm going to disappear, but I come back. So don't go anywhere. Go make a coffee, anything like that, because bam, look, I'm back. <laughs> so I decided I needed more texture on the page. I figured we were so busy. Let's see. I'm running with my theory. Don't stop. Just keep adding more. If you add a little bit more, you take it to that tipping point. And that's where, for years, I would always stop. When I first started playing with mixed media and different textures, I would always stop myself. And, um, yeah, I have learnt, don't stop yet. So I then decided I was going to sew my photo. Yes, I literally used my sewing machine and I sewed around my photo. And you know what? It looks really cool. I did two different colors. I did black and I did white just to sort of break it up a little bit. And then I was going to trim it flush and then went, no, tear it. That looks so much better. And it does. So as I'm doing this, it's all working out well. I was a little bit stressed today, to be honest with you. I'll be completely honest. My husband's home today because he, um, he's back. He, he gets like, I get it as well. Completely different reasons. But um, his back seizes up on him and he can't stand up. Like It's so hard to watch. It's terrible. But I've just fed him lunch and I said, right, I'm off to do a voiceover so that I've got my video for Tuesday ready to go. So I've got to be honest with you. I'm now loving it. What looked at the beginning like what the crazy woman what are you doing and guess what I now love it I absolutely love it it turned out exactly how I wanted it to turn out so family stories and then I'm like that doesn't make sense I went to this thing because it had captured written in it yet I pulled out family stories I don't know why so here I am I'm not even second guessing this because I knew this would be the exact title that I wanted on this page because the girls and Gizmo were literally just, this takes me a little bit to get it in the right spot. And did you note, I've put art glitter glue behind it. So once I tapped it down there, I couldn't move it. That's where I had to be. So I'm going on the diagonal. I seem to be on a bit of a diagonal thing at the moment. I love doing that. And it's coming together and I'm super happy with this. I really, really love how this turned out. I hope you guys give it a go. If you do, please jump on down below. I have got the in the description 
I've got a link to my Facebook group. My Instagram's having an issue at the moment, so don't bother going there. Go to my Facebook group and you can post. I'm, I created a group so you could post things that maybe I've inspired or maybe not. Maybe it's something that you've just come up with and yeah, you can add it in there and we can all share it. Everyone's nice. Everyone's courteous. Everyone's polite. Everyone has to start somewhere and not everybody's taste is the same. So this is, I am loving this now. Now I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, do a few squigglies around the border just to draw that black out a little bit. And that's why I did that. I'm just using a Posca pen. It's just a black Posca pen. It's the thicker one, not the thinner one. It is, if I have a look at it, 0.9 to 1.3 millimeter bullet tip. And here it is in the close-ups, guys. And I will have lots more still photos over on the Facebook group if you'd like to have a look there. And I absolutely love how this turned out. I love the... I've never stitched on a photo like that before. And I love it. Adding the zigzag stitching sort of... And the mica spray, it kind of mellowed out the stamps in the background. Just a little. You can still see them, but they're... Yeah, it was really good. So if you like this video, I would love nothing more than a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I would love to hear a comment from you guys. And of course, subscribe. It's free. Why not? Chat to you soon, guys. Bye.